Section 7, Cosmological Redshift and Radiation Temperature A very important characteristic of the expansion of the universe is that the wavelengths of photons of light traveling across the universe increase directly with the expansion of the universe. This is called cosmological redshift. We can say that the wavelength gets expanded by the expansion of space. Cosmological redshift is a different though similar effect to the Doppler redshift of light when the source of the light is moving away from the detector of the light. And it is different from the gravitational redshift that photons experience moving radially away from a massive object, as we saw in the black holes course. In Hubble's 1929 plot, the recession velocities of galaxies were actually redshifts of starlight absorption lines from the outer layers of the stars in those galaxies, as is covered in supplemental video number one. If the galaxies were moving away from us in fixed space, the redshifts would be due to Doppler shift. For distant galaxies, this gets reinterpreted as due to cosmological redshift of expansion of the universe. With a small component of Doppler redshift or blue shift due to galaxies, including our own Milky Way galaxy, moving relative to local space due to gravitational attraction to nearby galaxies. If galaxies did not move locally, if they just followed the expansion of the universe, every galaxy would be on the black line. But this galaxy has a little higher recession velocity from us. So it's moving away from the point in space that is expanding away from us. And these galaxies are moving you know, somewhat in our direction relative to that point, though receding from us. Cosmological redshift occurs for visible light and for gamma rays down to radio waves. Absorption lines also get redshifted along with the light that was not absorbed. Let's take some light that is emitted from one distant galaxy, subscript E for emitted, and detect it at a later time at another galaxy, subscript D for detected. The cosmological redshift factor of the light depends only on the ratio of the scale factors at the times of detection and emission. Since our universe is expanding, the scale factor increases with time and the detected wavelength is larger than the emitted wavelength. It got red-shifted. The wavelength increased continuously as the photons tra traversed the expanding space between the galaxies. It did not abruptly change at the detector. Astronomers detect light here and now. Time now is denoted as T sub zero, and the scale factor now is one. The wavelength detected now is denoted lambda sub zero. When astronomers look at distant galaxies, there is little difference between now today and a hundred years ago. But if our astronomers had a million years of observations, we'd have to be more careful with the scale factor at the time of detection. The right-hand side depends only on the scale factor at the time of emission, not on the intervening history of the scale factor versus time, and not on the wavelength, 
which is key to our determining the redshift of an object. Physicists and astronomers know the emission and absorption light wavelengths of very many atoms and ions here in the lab very precisely. Astronomers use spectroscopy to measure the detected light wavelengths very precisely. They match up detected redshifted wavelengths on the bottom of absorption lines, as on the bottom image, to laboratory wavelengths, as on the top image. See, this line got shifted in the direction of red. So did this one. So did these. The astronomer divides the wavelength they infer was emitted by the detected redshifted wavelength, and this tells the astronomer the scale factor of the universe at the time that light was emitted from the distant galaxy. Later we will see how to use the scale factor to infer the age of the universe when that light was emitted from the distant galaxy. However, Astronomers who image distant galaxies don't quote the scale factors in their publications and conversations. They use the redshift value z, that is 1 over the scale factor at emission, minus 1. Let's do some examples. If we emit light in the lab, and then detect it in the lab, the scale factor now is 1, so the scale factor 1 over 1 minus 1 is 0. Light emitted when the scale factor was 1 half about 8 billion years ago has redshift 1 over 1 half, which is 2, minus 1 equals 1. Z equals 1. Light shift emitted immediately after the Big Bang, when the scale factor was near zero, would have redshift z of near, inf infin infinite, near infinity. However, all light emitted in the first 300,000 years got absorbed shortly after emission, so that light no longer exists to be detected. For the first galaxies that emitted light, redshift z is in the range 11 to 48. Galaxies more distant from us have higher cosmological redshift z than closer galaxies. The Hubble Space Telescope can see up to about z of 12. The James Webb Space Telescope can see further, higher z, out to the first galaxies that emitted light redshift in the range 11 to 48. 372,000 years after the Big Bang, the observable universe was bathed in visible orange-red light. The scale factor was 9.2 by 10 to the minus 4. This light has traveled the expanding universe for 13.78 billion years, getting redshifted as the universe expanded. We now detect this as the cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation, with redshift Z of 1089 or 1090. More on this later. No light in our universe that we can detect today has a cosmological redshift higher than 1090. For small redshift z much less than 1, a distant galaxy's cosmological recession velocity equals redshift z times the speed of light, c. The vertical axis in Hubble's plot was a measure of z from redshifts. It takes some getting used to, but 
observed redshift z comes from colors, wavelengths, written as a number that denotes speed, distance, and the age and scale factor of the universe when the light was emitted. Astronomers use this redshift z, but as we are learning, we will use the scale factor a of t and only use the redshift z for specific times. The expansion of the universe causes the wavelengths of photons traveling the vast distances of the universe to increase directly with the expansion of the universe, cosmological redshift. Photon energy is inversely proportional to wavelength and so decreases with the expansion of the universe. The temperature of the electromagnetic radiation that started with the Big Bang is inversely proportional to the scale factor, being infinite at the Big Bang. Not really infinite. The temperature of the cosmic microwave background is 2.7255 Kelvin today, when the scale factor is 1. So, radiation temperature at some time in the past was 2.7255 Kelvin divided by the scale factor at that time. If we take some specific large region of the observable universe at a past time, and it expands over time, the total internal energy of the photons in that expanding region decreases over time due to the cosmological redshift of the photons, but this does not violate the first law of thermodynamics. More on this later.